And let me scroll down to the second page of our diagram. And this is what our lab topology will look like. In fact, this physical topology right here is the topology that we will be using throughout our FlexVPN video series. Although we're just going to be using part of that in this video. But the main components, as you can see, we have on the left hand side is considered our headquarter. All right, so we have two routers, R1, R2. We have our core switch, switch one. All right, and then we have a subnet for our server, VLAN 32, with the subnet of 172.16.32.0 slash 24, with the dot 40 being our Windows 2012 domain controller, DNS server, and certificate authority server. And at some point in this video series, we'll be performing radius authentication with the remote access. So we have a Cisco ICE 2.2 at the IP of dot 102. On the right hand side, we have three branches or remote sites. Each site has different devices that connects them to a simulated internet. Branch number one with the router BR1. And then we have branch number two with another router BR2. And then the branch number three, we have a Cisco ASA firewall which we're going to use a little bit to configure our crypto map version of IKV2. Behind each of these branch device, we have a single slash 24 subnet, as you can see right here, 172.17.1, right, with the third octet matching the branch number. And that's for branch number one, dot two for branch number two, and dot three is for branch number three. And just to minimize the number of switches that we need for the lab, I have taken advantage of using a VRF, right? The first instance of the VRF that I use is for simulating the internet. As you can see, it's sitting on the same switch as our core switch, switch one. By logically separate that using a VRF, since I need a layer three routing here, I had to call that VRF INET. We have a VLAN 11 that simulate the internet connection for the headquarters site. And then I have multiple routed ports connected to a branch site and the subnet are trying to make it easy to see. So for the headquarter internet, the subnet is 111, right? For branch number one is 222, branch number two is 333, and branch number three is 444. The second instance of the use of VRF is at the branches, right? Here we have a single physical switch called switch number two. And there I have created three different VRF, one per branch site. And there are VRF, BR1, BR2, and VR3, right? And from time to time, we're going to be performing connectivity testing from the switch, switch number two, right? We'll be able to ping sourcing from each one of these VRF, depending on what we'll be trying to test. But as far as the lab configuration in this video, we are only going to be utilizing the router R1, right? Which we will be creating a crypto map on. And then for the remote site, we have our branch number one BR1 router and branch number three with our ASA firewall. And we are going to build a site to site or LAN to LAN IPsec VPN from the headquarter to branch number one and branch, branch number three. And at the end, hopefully we will be able to provide reachability between these networks. So if you guys plan to build your own lab, uh, you can interconnect your devices by following this physical topology right here. And then in every lab, I'll have a diagram very similar to this, and then also show you the logical topology. All right, so now let's begin our lab configuration by reviewing the smart default. I mentioned to you guys earlier that you can take advantage of the Cisco smart default to save yourself quite a bit of configuration. Let me go back real quick. Things that are eligible for smart defaults are like V2 proposal and policy to begin with. So let me bring up a CLI to our router headquarter HQR1. And these are ISF 4K, just FYI. You can do a show crypto IQ2 proposal and see what is currently available proposal. You can see by default, there is a IQ2 proposal called default, and this is part of the smart default. And these are all of the crypto configuration that comes with it, right? For encryption, you got the AES CBC for different key size, the integrity, 
right, with the SHA, with the SHA-512 being the most secure, I believe, as well as the PRF. And then for the Delphi Hellman group, the largest group is group number five. If these satisfy your security needs, then you can pretty much just uh, stick with the smart default. Then we said we also have smart default for the IFV2 policy. There you go, name default. And it's matching any front door VRF and any local addresses. It's certainly referencing the default proposal, right? This guy right here. So right off the bat, you can save yourself for not having to configure the IFV2 proposal or the policy. All right, then we can also leverage the default transform set. Same thing, show IFV2, IPsec, transform set, call default that uses AES with SHA-1. Mode transport. Let's see if we can take a quick look at the IPsec profile as well, which is the last available option as part of the smart default right there, right? Show crypto IPsec profile, call default with the security lifetime or association lifetime of this. And then it's pointing to the transform set called default. So very similar to the IV2 proposal and policy.